This is your Dragon of Icepire Peak gameplay video for the Icepire Hold quest from the D&D Essentials Kit. Hi, Bob here, and welcome to Bob World Builder. For a few tips to make this last quest even more fun, and an update about what's coming up in the Essentials Kit series, check out my DM guide in the full Dragon of Icepire Peak playlist linked in the description, and stick around until the end of this video for an impromptu debrief of our surprising final confrontation with Cryovane. All right, Grace, who will you be playing? for this final quest. Oh hey, it's me, Cloda, the fighter, and Donabella Fiasco, the sidekick, healer, and Amalia, the edgiest blood hunter. The edgiest. And you're on your way to defeat the white dragon who's been in the directly and indirectly terrorizing the land for a few months, whom you also had a vision of whilst at the Shrine of Savras. And led by that prophetic vision, you trek from Phandalin into the Sword Mountains. After like a day or two, the clouds partly obscure a stone fortress situated atop the icy spur of a jagged snow-covered mountain that you recognize as Icepire Peak. Roll credits. Just kidding. <laughs> a landmark so enormous to be visible from Phandalin on a clear day. The mountain dwarfs the fortress, which consists of two separate structures adjoined by a stone bridge. A narrow, winding path corkscrews up the mountainside to the smaller of the two structures and appears to be the only safe way to reach it by land. It's an unwelcome path, but not as unwelcome as the cold, howling wind that buffets you. Ouch, I'm being buffeted. Get buffeted. <laughs> Ugh, I hate this weather. Let's get inside. You approach the door. I knock. No answer. Okay, let's go inside. As you walk inside, you see on your left a few stables, and two of them have horses in it. Hmm. Hey, horses. Hey's for horses. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, and I should have mentioned that you would have seen hoof prints uh, along the path as well. Are they wearing a uh, tack? Any gear? They, they have gear, horse yeah. Horse backpacks? They have horse things. Hmm. You know, horse stuff. Yeah, horse clothes. Yeah. I would like to proceed into the depths of this small building. <laughs> okay. Yeah, as you proceed out of the stables, kind of into the main chamber, there are like four doors around you at this point. I say... Hello? Is anyone here? There's a slight pause, and then one after the other, poof, poof, a door behind you and a door in front of you open up. In the one behind you, there's a pretty large man with looks like a heavy crossbow pointed at you guys, and in this one, there's a woman with a, a long sword in her hands. She says, what are you doing here? I'm here to kill a dragon. What are you doing here? We're here to steal some treasure. Oh, that sounds pretty cool. What have you found so far? Well, we haven't been able to go over there because there's still a dragon. There's a dragon? Uh, do you want to help me kill it? Try to kill the dragon? No, we're... I don't really want to tell you our plans. <laughs> Amalia's just like, heh, cowards. Heh. She sneers. The guy with the crossbow ra like raises it again and looks toward the woman. They like eye each other back and forth. Look, if you want to go try to fight that dragon, I'm not going to stop you. But I'm going to be the one stealing its gold out for your snowy corpse um that's kind of rude but you know if i kill it i'm not gonna share with you i mean i guess amalia probably won't i'm not really into like treasure so much i have been training for months to kill this dragon though so that's what i'm really excited you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave <laughs> The man steps aside, he like lowers his crossbow. They look confused, especially when you said not interested in treasure. They're like, what the heck, dude? But he kind of points the way up that little staircase to the about eight foot wide bridge that spans the 30 foot gap to the larger keep itself. Amalia is angry at Cloda for having no business sense because we could have charged a bounty on this dragon and we didn't. 
Don't you know blood hunters don't work for free, she says. You gotta toss a coin to me. <laughs> your blood hunter. Yep. So as you're crossing this bridge, you're recalling in your vision that as far as you know, this dragon is probably on the roof. I remember that this dragon is on the roof, says Cloda. <laughs> Malia says, you mean from that thing where you thought you were dead? <laughs> Are you sure that wasn't just some kind of hallucination? Nope, not sure about that at all. Yeah, I guess technically. <laughs> okay, proceed into the fortress. As you enter the first large room, it's about 25 by 25 feet square. It looks like a ruined hall of sorts. There's a large fireplace to the north side. From that fireplace, you hear a familiar kind of squeaking and chirping up in its chimney, but the rest of the room is just filled with bits of ruined gear and a large ruined tapestry bearing an emblem of a black tower being struck by a golden bolt of lightning. Hmm. How Looks is, ancient. How is the squeaking and chirping familiar? Uh, you remember it being associated with those sturges. Oh. I stay away from the fireplace. Um, yeah, they're in like every chimney in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you make a perception check? Ten. Just a big ruined tapestry and a bunch of stuff and some squeaky things in a fireplace. No dragons. <laughs> Let's move out. You guys across the hall here? So that room looks like a large ruined dining room. So just a big like table, one of the, or a couple of the legs probably smashed out from under it. You know, and you remember this fortress is where the dragon had forced the orcs out of. So you get a sense that they had been living here for a while and probably smashed whatever was left of this place. Mm. Rude, rude and sloppy. Don't you agree, Amalia? I guess. Amalia hates agreeing. <laughs> Don't you agree, Donabella? Yeah, I totally agree. You should be kinder to other people's belongings. Amalia rolls her eyes, pulls up her third hood. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, just continuing into the next room. Okay, that room looks like a ruined kitchen. There's, you know, some places for cooking and just scattered old like sacks and boxes with whatever might be left of some foodstuffs. I pull a Skyrim and check every single sack. You find nothing of value. Just like Skyrim. <laughs> there's, no, there's no clay pots with rupees to smash here. All right. I pirouette down this hallway. Lo Amalia, lovely. Amalia slinks and Donabella just walks like a normal person. Wow. Like a nerd. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you see a spiral staircase kind of right in front of you. There's also a smaller chamber that looks like some kind of war room to your right and a large ruined barracksy looking room to your left. Is there any, anything cool in the war room? Uh, yeah, I mean the war room looks pretty cool. There's a couple skeletons in there, first of all. Look like human skeletons. Amalia thinks that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, three, three of them are just kind of like piled on one end of the room. Uh, another one is like in a corner in a chair. There's a table kind of dominating the room that has what is barely legible, a very brittle old map with some tiny, some, some tiny little figurines. That it's an ancient sense. place. Uh, furthermore, you can make another perception check in this room. Donabella pops her head in. This time she rolls a 20, not natural. Ah, you see wall made of the, bears? the unmistakable outline <laughs> of what must be a secret door. As you shift that stone door out of the way, you see what must be the rear of another not-so-secret door connecting to that audience chamber room that you first walked into. And to your right, there's a narrow set of stairs descending into what looks like a cold, even darker room. I cast light All on right. Donabella. <laughs> Her unicorn horn uh, yes, hat. I'll on her mask. Is glowing brightly. Amalia will check the stairs for traps. With a 16. Looks free of traps. Let's go down these stairs. 
even you... though they, they're the opposite direction from the dragon. Yeah. As you head down the stairs, you enter into a 15 by 15 square room with a door to your right, a door to your left, and a door straight ahead. Each one, the lintel, is marked with the word crypts. Hmm, some crypts. This would be such a good place to work on my poetry. <laughs> oh, Amalia, I didn't know you were a writer. Of course I'm a writer. How else would I pour out my troubled soul? I don't know, I kind of thought you used your swords for that. <sighs> that too. She that, writes with her swords. That too. She writes in blood. I want to open a crypt. Right, left, or forward? Right. It's an even narrower hallway and then splits off to either side and you see a few niches with closed coffins in them. Uh, Amalia checks them for traps. Okay. So she goes up to one of these through the, the rough-hewn passageway, cracks it open, I guess. Just some bones, some rusty armor, a rusty weapon, some unnamed fallen warrior. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of boring. <laughs> Let's open a sum in, in the forward room. As you approach the forward door, it is locked. I should have said as you tried the forward door, <laughs> it is locked. <laughs> as you approach it, uh, you know it is locked. I kick, I kick it down. <laughs> yeah, so roll, uh, roll an attack. Or a strength check, I guess. Athletics check. Yeah. 20-something. Yeah, you. It's it's like pretty weakened by time. And you just smash right through it. Fireman, I just, I just Sparta kick it. Blade man through the door. Oh, even better. <laughs> you blast through it. This part of the crypt is more finely carved, and it looks like this was has been untouched by the orcs. Untouched for much longer than the rest of the fortress. Guess they weren't smart enough to Kool-Aid man this door. There's just a clodash shaped hole in the door. <laughs> yeah. There is. They probably didn't find the secret doors. In any case, as you head into that room, it's a bit of a narrow hallway, then opens up into a long rectangular room extending out before you. On the far end of it, you can see the inside of another secret door. In each corner of the room are four nicer looking coffins. And in the center is what looks like some kind of big sled. What's it made out of? It's like a almost like a weird boat. It's like really nice like wood and some metal framing. Huh. A toboggan, one might say. Does it look like it could fit through the door? The door straight ahead of it on the far side of the room, yeah. yes. You wanna go check out that door? Yeah. You head over there, push it open. A cliff oh. down the mountainside. Like a cliff that you could sled down or like a yeah. drop? Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does look fun, but you get the sense that it's more for dire circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, let's check out these four uh, sarcophagi. Two of them are empty. One of them contains an even older looking body than that first one you saw. And... The fourth one is pretty full of loot, baby. What kind of loot? There's some shiny gold in there. You see some platinum pieces. There's some really nice looking, not magical looking, but some nice looking weaponry. Let's take some of it if we get out alive. So we should get on with the reason we came here. Okay. You return to the main floor, exit through the war room. There's that spiral staircase going up to the roof. And there's the large barracks room over there that you didn't really look through yet. Let's take a quick peek in the barracks room first. Looks like a bunch of smashed cots all kind of laid up against the walls. Uh, it looks like a lot of furniture has actually been burned in the fireplace. Bits and bobs of what look like orc weapons and- Okay, well let's take a moment to prepare here. Uh, I put the necklace of fireballs around Donna Bella's neck. She's really excited to use real fire instead of her stupid sacred flame that never works. The sacred flame that worked like one out of a hundred times yeah. this whole campaign. <laughs> uh, Amalia will take a moment to activate Crimson Rite. 
Donabella does some buffs, aid, and bless, both on all three of us. Nice. Okay. You're all buffed up, feeling ready as you can be to do the thing that you've been preparing to do. And training. <laughs> for weeks, maybe probably a few short months, fighting some orcs, making friends with some half orcs, slaying some were rats, fighting some big insect things, feeding a manticore <laughs> with a deer shot by Inverna, your lost friend. I take a minute to relive all these memories while Amalia tries to push Clota up the stairs. Yeah, and so she's slowly, <laughs> actually she's probably really struggling because you're super freaking <laughs> tough. At the top of the stairs, peeking out of the doorway, to your right you see a similar room to the barracks downstairs, except this looks like it was probably where whoever the leader of those orcs had stayed. To your left, a few arrow slits that look out onto the roof. It looks slick with ice. There are three foot high stone walls wrapping around most of it, except for a corner to the south straight out ahead of you and a corner to the southeast. Uh, the walls have been broken off, perhaps by cryovane, perhaps by time itself. And in the center of this icy wide roof is a large white dragon. I'm so surprised! Yeah, it looks like it's sleeping. It's got a big long tail, a long neck, some pointy white horns and claws kind of nested beneath its chin. It's loafing? Yeah, sort of loafing. <laughs> well, Donabella is gonna kinda try to be in cover, sort of in the stairway if she can. Amalia's gonna step out first, actually. She's the stealthy one. She's okay. gonna test the ground. She does walk carefully. But walk if she were to not walk carefully, would she fall over? You get the sense that there'd be a chance she would fall over if she <laughs> okay. walked at normal speed. Okay, so she walks at half speed. Oh, and just roll a stealth check for her. But, uh, 20, not natural. Seems like she's unnoticed. Okay, she'll slowly sneak up. Yeah, she's taking her time. Cloda will also emerge carefully. Disadvantage. A uh, 16 and a 14. Appears to be unnoticed. Okay. So after those first few steps, she'll continue. And then we attack. Okay. So <laughs> you're going to obviously have surprise here as you've walked all the way up to it unnoticed. Uh, so what are the order of your events here that you want to do for this first round? And then Amalia strikes, Clodagh strikes, and Donabella throws a fireball bead hmm. so that it only hits Cryovane and not us. Nice. You and uh, Amalia can make attacks with advantage as your opponent is unaware of your presence. Well, first first, Amalia places Curse of the Marked. And then, attacks. 23. Hits. Second attack. 24. Misses. <laughs> <laughs> Regular damage. Hemocraft, so 35 total damage. Okay. And then, she will place her Brand of Castigation. Uh, so that requires no bonus action or anything. The emblem of the Raven Queen is seared into... Cryovane's forehead, edgily. Um, now Cloda will attack. Yeah. At the same time, just for our listeners who might not be sure how surprise works. This it's is all... not like Amalia attacks and then for some reason <laughs> Cryovane's still asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Higher than 24 and 20 something. Wow. Uh, Good hits. Yeah. With the Dragon Slayer Greatsword. Oh crap, yeah. So this is gonna be 10d6 damage. How many extra d6 does it do? Three? Um, yep. So regular greatsword is 2d6, and then right. dragon slayer does an extra 3d6 to dragons. That's freaking nuts. That's more than the fireball's gonna be. <laughs> and uh I'll action surge right away. Crit. <laughs> wow. 
and 11. 11 misses. So really only one of those attacks hit, but it was a crit, so it's yeah, still- Yeah, so it's like two attacks. It's still 10d6 damage. So this one's only gonna be 10d6 plus six. Yes. Not plus 12. Yes. Yeah. You're gonna like speed this up in post, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's not just 10 minutes of me rolling dice. Yeah. The dice rolling and like math is the most stuff that I cut out. Like that's really what takes time in Dungeons and Dragons is what I've learned. 41 from that crit. I rolled much better on this one. Wow. Um, fireball time. Dinobell's fireball. <laughs> so he has to make... Well, you're he's unconscious. So I, I assume that implies he automatically fails saving throws. That's 25 fire damage. How much damage total did I just do? 137 hit points. <laughs> <laughs> now what? Okay, here's what's happening. Amalia and Cloda, stealthily as they can, creep on up to big ol' sleeping cryovane right at their big, frosty breath snoring head. Donabella had positioned herself in the arrow slit, ready with a bead of fireballs. Everyone at the same time unloads a ridiculous attack <laughs> upon this unconscious beast, or dragon, should I say. <laughs> Amalia, piercing right behind the ear of this reptilian creature into the neck with her static electricity blade branding its forehead with the emblem of the Raven Queen. At the same time, you bring down fast and hard a massive strike four with massive your- strikes. Yeah, r rather four. You're just as fast as you can. Like your arms, your shoulders are instantly burning through the weight of your Dragon Slayer sword as you just chop, chop, chop as hard as you can into the <laughs> neck of Cryovane. At the same time, amid your strikes, a massive eruption on the roof of Icepire Hold. More power unleashed in one moment than Icepire Hold has seen since Cryovane themselves and I just came hear, here. Just hear Donna Bella and... laughing maniacally. <laughs> At last, the flames! <laughs> Truly turned over a new leaf. And of course, the eyes of Cryovane flash open in utter fear. There's blood splattered on its face upon the two of you standing there. There are ashes flying. The snow and ice melted from behind it. So you're hit with like a blast of, of humid, but then at the same time, like a wave of, of dry air blasting out from behind it. And in this moment, Cryovane is gonna attempt an action here. Roll initiative. <laughs> Cryovane goes second. Oh my god! <laughs> They're about to die. They right. should have died from that first strike. How do you end Cryovane? I hold the Dragon Slayer greatsword above my head. Any last words? You win. And I cut off his head! <laughs> and it freaking falls off. Rolls a little bit to the side across the slippery ice. This half-charred, massive body in front of you. It's blood just pouring out and freezing upon the ice instantly. The howling wind seems silent. Your ears are still ringing from the blast of the fireball. You've defeated Cryopane. <laughs> Donna Bella's just in there like, did we get it? Is it dead? <laughs> Should I throw another one? No, no, it's okay. It's okay. We got it. Yeah. Here at the end of this fight, what do you do? Captain Morgan on that dragon head. Donna Bella takes a picture with her Polaroid camera. <laughs> so she's had this whole time. You guys have saved the town of Phandalin once and for all. We made the world a better place. Yeah. And... What do Cloda and Donabella do now? Well, together, they will travel the realm, slaying more dragons. Nice. Donabella changes to a different school of magic because she really liked that fireball. <laughs> Donabella becomes a wizard. Cool. Yeah, maybe she is able to learn from 
Jug, your wizarding friend who got quarantined and could no longer come and hang out. Yes. <laughs> Amalia returns to the Shadow Fell as a Shadow Archive. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where she parties with all her Shadow Archive friends. They party? They don't. I mean, they party in their own special way. They just read poetry to each other. Well, this has been a ton of fun. And it's been like 10 months that we've been doing this campaign now. Wow. Feels weird that it's done. Yeah. I hope you guys have enjoyed this campaign as much as us. And keep building. Keep building. Build your keeps. <laughs> that was so easy, I almost feel bad. <laughs> Yeah, straight up. I know I don't normally do like a debrief here on Mike, but I feel like it's worth it. Uh, it only actually had 133 hit points. Wow. So technically you killed it, but I decided like it I'm going to give it chance. one hit point. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I would have done. And, and, and just see what happens here. And I still wanted to roll initiative because it's not like it should have just gone on its own. And what I had planned to do was if it survived, would have been to try to grapple you and just like fly you up into the air yeah, and then drop you. That makes sense. Um, think, like really, yeah, my plan was first person I can just fly him up in the air, drop him off the hold. And I was going to do that with Amalia. And she basically would have then been out of the picture. She wouldn't have yeah. died probably, but she wouldn't have been able to get back in the fight. That's what might have happened. Cryobane probably should be an adult dragon <laughs> see all right i mean I'll, I'll save a lot of this for the dm guide but uh since this is like the last one it's worth talking about i had really thought about like should i give it some layer actions or like a legendary action because it is only a young dragon not an adult so it doesn't get any of that stuff yeah but then literally looking over today i was like it can do a crazy amount of damage like it's breath weapon if you fail to save any one of you would have died or been reduced to zero i should say you rolled well yeah yeah if you rolled a little above average i think the average is 45 uh that's just the breath weapon it, it had a passive perception of 11 while sleeping hmm. uh so fortunately you were able to still surpass that you had a good plan and it worked <laughs> so yeah uh you were able to just sneak up there and, and kill it